Welcome to A Message from Heaven, presented by The Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee, where John Shannon Sr. is the preacher. Here you can expect a cordial greeting from those who love God and worship Him in spirit and in truth. It is our privilege to invite you to study with us from the Bible, God's holy and divine will made known unto man. And now presenting evangelist, John Shannon Singer. Hello, once again, I'm John Shannon. I preach for the Church of Christ that meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you again for watching this our weekly telecast. Uh, today we will continue our study in the five W's in the Christian's life. Uh, we dealt with uh, our responsibility to the word, our responsibility to the worship, our responsibility to, to the walk, that is the living the Christian life, and our responsibility to the work. Today, we will deal with the last one, and it's entitled, Our Responsibility to the World. So we'll deal with the word, the worship, the walk, the word. Now we'll deal with uh, the, the, wor uh, uh, the world. We'll deal with, let me do that again. We have dealt with the word, the worship, the walk, the work, and today, we will deal with the world. Uh, in Ephesians, the book of Ephesians, you may be turning there. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, will be the text that we will use. But before we go to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, we'll look at um, 2 Corinthians 4, 3 and 4, where the Apostle Paul, I'm going to give you time to find that. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3 and verse 4. Paul said, if our gospel be hid. When we talk about the gospel, we're talking about the Lord's scripture. The gospel is God's power the same, Romans 1 and verse number 16. The fundamental facts of the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, the death of Christ, the burial of Christ, his resurrection from the dead, and his ascension back to heaven, Acts 1 and verse 11. So Paul said, if our gospel be hid, watch it, it is hid to them that are lost. In other words, lost sinners. We have the Lord's scripture, but we have lost sinners who needs the scripture of the gospel in order to be saved. It is God's gospel that instructs man what he must do in order to receive salvation, um, which is already set aside in Christ. And then he says, in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. That's laughing Satan. Satan is tickled to death when the gospel is hid from people who are lost because Satan knows that if the gospel doesn't reach mankind, a mankind doesn't obey the gospel, he knows that it will be lost. In the book of Luke, uh, chapter uh, 8 and verse number 12, it says, Then Satan come and take away the seed, lest he believes and be saved. So Satan knows the power of the gospel, and he's going to do anything that he can to blind the minds of individuals to keep them from seeing the gospel. Uh, darkness of denominationalism, Blind them with denominationalism, with drugs, with drinking, with worldliness, you name it. He's trying to use it, or he is using it, on men to keep them blind. And then 
Uh, it says, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, shine under them. That's the light that shines. The light, the gospel light. Jesus said he was light. God is the source of light. Christ is light. Uh, his scripture is light. And saints are light. And sinners need the light of the gospel in order to be saved. Now, we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. And Paul had already been down at Ephesus. We have the background of this in Acts chapter 19, where about 12 individuals obeyed the truth. Well, they were baptized in the Christ, uh, and they were saved. Now, Paul writes this letter to the church at Ephesus, and he is telling them how they were before they obeyed the gospel light or the truth. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1 through 3, Paul is telling them how they were before they obeyed the gospel. And we will apply that today to individuals who are in the world, who are lost in sin, who are separated from God because of sin and disobedience. Now, in Ephesians chapter 2, in verse number 1, notice the text. It says, Paul said, And ye hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins. Paul said that before they obeyed the gospel, they were dead in trespasses and sin. So, point number 1, verse number 1, the people in the world who have not obeyed the gospel, I'm talking about an alien sinner, an outsider. They are dead in sin. Well, what do you mean dead in sin? I remember a young man, uh, well, a gentleman, and I was in a tent meeting preaching, and he said, what in the world can a dead man do? Well, he didn't understand that a person can be living physically and dead spiritually. Anytime you have a death, you have a separation. In the book of James chapter 2, James states that the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works dead also. Now, anytime you have any kind of death, it simply means there's a separation. It does not mean annihilation. It means a separation. Now, in this case, in our text, it says they were dead in trespass and sin. It simply means they were separated from God spiritually. Isaiah 59, 1 and 2, sin separates from God. Is that all right? Now, it says ye have he quickened. The word mean, quickened means made alive. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, Christ, God is the only one that can quicken of give life. But let me point this out. He will not quicken until man obeys. God saves when man obeys. Now, who were dead in trespasses and sin? So point number one, they were dead in sin. And people in the world are dead in sin. Now, in 1 Timothy 5 and verse number 6, we have the account of a woman who was living in pleasure, but she was dead while she lived. In 1 Timothy 5, 6, Paul said, But she that liveth in pleasure is dead while she liveth. So that tells you right there, that a, a woman or a person can live in the physical realm and be dead in the spiritual realm. In other words, it simply means they, this woman was committing sin. She was living in the flesh, but she was separated from God. Well, so 
They are dead in trespasses and sin. Now, not only that, look at verse number two of the same chapter, Ephesians chapter two and verse number two. Notice what Paul said to the Ephesian Christians, watch it, after he had obeyed the gospel and he reminded them the way they were before they obeyed the truth. Now, they are saved when he wrote it, but before they obeyed the truth, they were in sin, they were lost. Now, it says wherein in time past. He said that's the way you used to be. In time past, you walked according to the course of this world. What do you mean according to the course of the world? They walked in the direction of the instructions of the world. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, let me say this. Any time a man walk according to the course or to the direction of the world, that's sinful stuff. When it comes to salvation, of course, and we're talking about remission of sin, which we have the direction from God's word. But when you walk according to the course of the world and the things of the world, you can't be saved by walking according to the course of the world. And then he says, according to the prince of the power of the air. That has to do with Satan and his devices. He said, watch it. They walked according to the course of the world in time past. I used to be like that. Walking and doing things of my own imagination, doing things of the world, case in point, drinking, gambling, smoking, cursing, lying, cheating, you name it. That's sinful stuff, stuff according to the world. And it's, it's good. What do you mean it's good? It's pleasurable. Uh, I'm reminded of uh, what the Hebrew writer wrote in Hebrews 10, 25 concerning Moses. It says, choosing rather to suffer the affliction with the people of God than to uh, enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Sin is pleasure in it. You enjoy it. If it wasn't pleasure in it, you wouldn't want to do it. It's good to the flesh. You lust after it, but it's only for a season. And when you sin, you separate from God spiritually. All right? You're in sin. So these people were dead in sin. Watch it. They were deceived by sin. They walked according to the course of the world. That's point number two, verse number three, uh, two. Now, let's go to point number three. It says, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedient. Watch it. It's still going on in the world today. In other words, they are disobedient. People in the world are disobedient. They are breaking God's law. They are sinning. Sin is a transgression a violation of God's law. And people in the world are sinning. Paul said, you used to do that. The attitude, he said, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Watch it. The children of the devil. Wait a minute. Did you say children of the devil? Yeah. In 1 John 3.10, it classifies the children of the devil and the children of God. The children of the devil are the ones who are in the world who have not obeyed the gospel. The children of God are the people who have been in the world who are called by the gospel of Christ, God's power to save, and they have been translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Colossians 1, 13 and verse 14. So look what you have. You have the children of God on one hand and the children of the devil on under one other hand. Well, what makes the difference? One have obeyed the gospel, one have not obeyed the gospel. And well, why are you preaching? Because we are trying to take the gospel to the world so when they obey it, they'll, be, they'll become children of God. And children of God have salvation. Children of the devil do not have salvation. They are damnation there. Is that all right? Now, so 
they were disobedient. Look at verse number uh, three uh, A. Look at it. It says, "Among whom also we all had our conversation." The word conversation means man of life. In time past, in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desire of the flesh of, and of the mind, and were by nature. The word nature here means long-standing practices. Uh, the children of wrath, even as others. Paul said, we used to be the same way. So they were dead in sin. They were deceived by sin. They were disobedient. And they were defiled. Paul said it in trial. He said, we used to be defiled. But since we obeyed the gospel, God has cleaned us up and raised us up to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Nobody can stand before God without being in Christ because he is our righteousness and his blood covers us. And when God looks down on us, he looks at the blood of Christ that indicate, see, the blood of Christ covers our sins when we obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now, they were defiled. Look, they were defiled. Defiled, yes, all messed up. I'm reminded of what Jeremiah said about God's people in doing his day. He says, and I'm comparing this to the people in the world. He says, for my people is foolish. People in the world primarily, when it comes to spiritual things, they're foolish. They don't know. Not saying that they are bad people. They're just not saved. They're living in sinful lives. Well, he said they're foolish. They have not known me. People in the world don't know God. Now, let me pause here a moment. Some individuals say, I know God. I know Christ. I know the Holy Ghost. Let me tell you something. The Bible, I'm going to do a little scourging here. In 1 John, we may turn there. In 1 John 3, I believe it is, the epistle. 1 John 3. 1 John 3. Uh, 1 John 2, rather. And verse number 3. Listen to this. Some individuals say, well, I know God. Well, you know, you ever seen God? Have you ever felt it? You ever seen Christ? No. Well, this is how you know God. 1 John 3 and verse number, 1 John 2, verse number 3. John said, hereby we do know that we know him. Why? How? If we keep his commandment. Don't tell me you know God and you don't keep his commandments. Now, watch what it says. Just because you know about God, and you believe it exists in God, that doesn't mean you know him. Because he says, hereby we do know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. Look at verse 4. It says, he that said, I'll make the statement, I know him, and keepeth not his commandment, look at what the text says, is a liar, and the truth is not in it. This is the way you know God is when you keep his commandments. That's why it's so important to get the gospel out to individuals so they can keep his commandments, so they'll well, obey his commandments, keep them, and then they'll know God. That's good. That's a little excursion, but I had to bring that in. God, back to Jeremiah 4, verse number 22, for my people is foolish, they have not known me. They are started children. Uh, they have no understanding. Watch it. They are wise to do evil. That's worldly stuff. But to do good, they have no knowledge. If you want to know what's right and stuff that pleases God, you must go to the gospel light because it will direct you in what pleases God. Now, not your own thoughts, 
but the gospel. And some individuals are like uh, the people to whom Paul wrote. Paul said in Romans 2 and verse number 8, but unto them that are contentious, always want to argue and debate with you and do not obey the truth. See, you've got to obey the truth. People in the world, you can argue and, and debate, but until you obey truth, you will not be saved. Now, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath. That's Romans chapter 2 and verse number 8. Now, what are you saying? I'm saying in point number 4 in Ephesians, in our text, Ephesians 3, in uh, 3a, watch it. They are defiled. Why? Because of sin. And what we're trying to do is take the gospel to individuals so God can clean them up if they obey. Look at verse number uh, 3b. It says, And were by nature the children of wrath, even as others, they are doomed. Children of wrath. What do you mean, children of wrath? Obey uh, the devil's stuff, you're doomed. Now look at this. We talked about the people in the world being dead in sin. Doesn't mean that you're not an outstanding citizen. It just simply means you're separated from God. Doesn't mean you're not taking care of your family. Doesn't mean you're not you're, you're separated from God spiritually. It doesn't mean, watch it, that you don't provide for your family. No, it just simply means you're separated from God. Dead in sin, deceived by sin, disobedient, defiled, and doomed. Look at verse number four as we go further. But you can be delivered. What? You can be delivered. You can be delivered. All right? Look at Look what he said in verse four. Ephesians two, verse number four. Let's go down. But God, look at that. He, Paul told him how you used to be. And even people in the world today are in that same predicament. Dead in sin, deceived by sin, disobedient, uh, defiled, doomed, but it, you can have deliverance. There's hope. He said, but God, this changes, doesn't it? But God, who is rich in mercy. God is rich in mercy. Man may not be rich in mercy, but God is rich in mercy. For his great love, wherein he loved us. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me all this sinful stuff people are doing in the world, God is, yes, he's still merciful. And he's so merciful that he long, about 2,000 years ago, he sent his only begotten son into the world. The same man, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believing in him should not perish, but should have eternal life. God sent his son. Romans 5 and verse 8, God commanded his son uh, toward us. God commanded his love toward us. In that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's the love of God. Even when we were dead in sins, as quickened us together with Christ, by grace are you saved. Watch this. By grace are you saved. Look at that. It's by the grace of God. Grace is a, something we don't deserve. And Christ, Jesus, is the grace of God, the gift to man. And then it says in, uh, in verse 6, and have raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Now Paul is telling them, watch it. After you, you've been saved by grace, you're in Christ, sitting together in heavenly places. Verse 7 says, in in the ages to come, he may show the excellent riches of his grace in his, in his, in uh, kindness toward us through Jesus Christ. Verse 8 said, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that's not of yourself, for it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10 said, For we are his workmanship. Created in the Christ Jesus under good work. Now, just how can a person in the world be saved? 
Ephesians 1 and verse number 3 says, In whom also you trusted after you heard the word of truth. You've got to hear the word of truth. What is it? The gospel of your salvation. And also they believe. They were filled with the Holy Spirit of promise. Now, you've got to hear the gospel of Christ, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Christ. How he died on the cross, shedded his blood, and he purchased the church. And the church is in Christ, Romans 12, 4 and 5. You've got to hear the gospel and believe it. You've got to repent of your sins, Acts 17, 30. Change your mind about sin and stop. Then you've got to confess your faith in Jesus, Romans 10, 9 and 10. Then you've got to be baptized in the Christ for the remission of sin, Acts 2.38. Now, some individual will tell you there's nowhere in Ephesians 2 that it says they had to be baptized. Don't you have enough intelligence, I'm talking about you Bible scholars, to know when you read the background of Acts chapter uh, uh, Ephesians, look at it, Acts chapter 19, you'll see that these people had already been obeyed. They heard, they believed, they repented, they confessed, and they were baptized into Christ. So Paul was writing to people who had already obeyed the gospel. And so if you're a sinner and you had obeyed the gospel and you just read verse 8, you got to go back to Acts chapter 19, 1 through about 6, and you see where they heard, they believed, repent, confess, and were baptized into Christ. I hope that you've enjoyed this lesson. May God bless and keep you till we meet again. A message from heaven has been presented by the Church of Christ, which meets at 2400 James Road in Memphis, Tennessee. We're located west of the intersection at James Road in Hollywood. Visit us each Lord's Day where you will receive a cordial greeting. Our schedule of services are... Sunday Bible class at 9.15 a.m. and 5 p.m. Sunday worship at 10.30 a.m. and 6 o'clock p.m. We also meet on Wednesdays for Bible study at 7 o'clock p.m. Call us at 901-357-9090. Also, visit us on the World Wide Web at www.jamesrdchurchofchrist.com or you can email us at jasrdcoc at bellsouth.net Thank you for tuning in to today's telecast and remember, we are journeying unto the place of which the Lord said, I will give it you. Come thou with us and we will do thee good. Until next time, we bid you good day.